if you just keep on doing this to people, just like in general, you keep on catching people that they never learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, just through experience and now you so he just like you know he, 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 that is a very good point yeah, that's deep. <laughs> I just I mean probably more I just don't want my kid like a bitch hey what's up everybody welcome to the champ program I'm Sierra I'm here with Dan Hartwig Jay Richardson and the Maurice Claret. We get a V now. We got a V. <laughs> oh yeah. Are you guys jealous? <laughs> I know. The J- tightest J- t-shirt in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so I really wanted to talk about what happens to somebody's confidence when they have all these goals, like we talked about, and let's say they did something that's like the opposite of the goals. Kind of mm-hmm. like how you said you refuse to commit to something unless you know you're going to do it. Mm-hmm. So whatever comes out of your mouth, like that's the truth. What would you say to people out there who really are looking for that extra oomph of motivation? Maurice, you kind of were actually just talking about, you know, helping people and not letting it Kind of letting them fall. You're talking about not helping people. <laughs> yeah, but it it kind of not goes hand in hand. Helping. Yeah, not helping, not but helping because helping at the same time you're teaching them a lesson. Yeah, so, so maybe easy if I just kind of reference the story I was talking to. Sometimes it's easier for people to yeah, understand digest stories. Sure. Yeah. So uh, in, in regards to my son, and hopefully this doesn't send me to like the uh, child services. <laughs> 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 so I may see my son uh, doing something around the house, whether he's climbing on something. Uh, whether he's playing with something uh, or a person's, and, I, and I'll get to answer to your question, but I, I'll tell the story first. The natural reaction, I think, for parents is to um, let me catch my fi- let me catch my child because I don't want to see them hurt themselves, or let me interrupt them from doing something that uh, may bring them failure of some sorts. And in probably ninety five to ninety nine percent of the time, I'm like total opposite. Uh, I don't, it's, it, it doesn't bother me to see my kid cry. It doesn't bother me to see my kid fall. It doesn't bother me for, to see my kid scrape his knee or to hit himself and he gets a little boo. It just doesn't bother me. Now, something that may be detrimental to your life, you know, <laughs> maybe it's something different, but I don't, um, I believe that there's more learned through that experience than me telling him something because he just doesn't understand the words. Mm-hmm. He, he doesn't understand the English language. And so I started seeing it early on where he'll correct his own behavior from failing. And in life, I just think that like when people protect you or always catch you before you fall or, or they start to show you sympathy from something that happens to you, I think that you have a, a like Pavlov's dogs, a conditioned response behind what you get, mm-hmm. right? You get conditioned to just have people do stuff for you. And so uh, I'm not raising, I'm raising a, like a, a tough kid on purpose and not tough in a sense of like, I want to hate the world, but I can endure something. I can endure pain. I can mm-hmm. endure um, some sort of physical abuse. And I just have like some tenacity and um, resilience. And, uh, resilience. That's probably a better word. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and that, that's sort of like what I'm raising. Uh, but in regards to um, her question, it's almost like that same way, or you can, you can view an adult. If something doesn't happen, um, you literally have to, I'm I'm gonna go two places with this because I think this is important. You have to, you have to put the information out there for them to take hold of, if they wanna take hold of on how to improve, right? We can put the website there, but nothing happens until the person consciously says, hey, I wanna buy into that or commit to that process to get a desired result. No matter how bad I wanna help Jay, no matter how much information I give him, no matter how many help, self-help books I give him, nothing happens into your life until you like say, hey, I want to do something. Mm-hmm. And I told Ashley this today, and it's, it's fitting you say that. I never knew that a conversation I was having with Ashley would be relevant to now. And I said, trying to help somebody with them not wanting to help themselves is like blowing air into a tire with a hole in it. Mm-hmm. You so can true. keep on going, keep on going, keep on talking. Know that you're talking right. No, Come from a great place. But if you're not in a position where you want to receive the information, it's like pumping air into a tire or into a tube with a hole in it. Absolutely. It's going to go in one ear and out the other. It's going to go into the tire and out the other. And so in some ways, to answer to your question, I may be like, hey, you can take the approach of 
harsh advice and harsh criticism and say, hey, I hope you do this. Or you can say, hey, man, here's the information. I hope that you want better for yourself. I hope that you want to improve. Uh, sorry to see that you failed, but you'll have to experience that level. And if you really want something, and like I told you, back to my harsh truths, motherfucker, you have to want it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and like so, it, and that's the benefit of this platform. I'm not about to hog all the time, but this is four different personalities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm coming that's from? Such a good point. This shit ain't gonna be for everybody. My shit is like, motherfucker, if you want it, go get, get your it. Ass up and go. Motherfucker, if you want it, go get it. You know what I'm coming from? And there's, if you want something, go get it. Commit to it. And a person can see my face when I really want something. They're serious about it. You know what I'm saying? I just don't understand nothing else that... And, and I, I don't know. I've just been through a whole bunch of, like, just tumultuous life shit. Life ain't really... Like, when you finally decide on what it is you want out of life, and it's something that's, like, of substance, it takes a lot of fucking work just to make that thing happen. Mm-hmm. And so you start to realize, like, man, I don't have time to fucking waste. You know what I'm saying? Stuff mm-hmm. that you're serious about. Like, I talked about Dan about this earlier, right? Stuff that you really want, bro, like it just takes all the fucking effort in your being, all the effort in your mind, all the effort in your everything that you have to achieve that. And so, like, if you if if like if you can't get there with what you're trying to achieve, like I just really don't understand you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, continue to do this and I hope you get it, I hope you get it, I hope you get it. To me, it's just like that shit is over, or like that shit is not probably like the core of who I am. Like, and I do it here and there, but that's kind of like, I don't know. No, I completely see I where know, you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, Cause like, I can, I can like shift this thing. Like no, two, I two. completely, I completely see where you're coming from. And that's why I like that. There's four different personalities mm-hmm. here, you know, um, because we all kind of have a different coaching mentality. Mm-hmm. So obviously yours is like really, cutthroat you know you either want it or you don't jay do you kind of have like a similar thought process on that so i I subscribe to his mentality as well however what i will say is you said something last show that i think resonated and it's make sure the people around you understand what you're trying to do what your goals are uh because you can build accountability with with your tribe whether it be family members whether it be your spouse whether it be your roommate your brother your homie whoever you spend the most time with Make sure they know what you're trying to do so that they can, you know, if for some reason you do have that day, like you said, where you fall, uh, you got somebody there to kind of remind you, hey, man, that's that. you said you wanted to do something, get your ass up and keep going. And, and, and having somebody, sometimes you need uh, another voice other than the one in your head to just give you a little push, give you a reminder of what it is you said you would do because it it, it makes you feel uh, like, like on the spot, like, oh, I can't, I don't want to. I don't want to not get this done. I've already told myself I was going to do it. Hell, my man's right here telling me, hey, you said you're going to do this. And sometimes that helps somebody uh, stay in that in that mental head space of, of I'm going to stay on path. I'm going to stay on course. Uh, and if you do fall, one thing I'll always say is like, don't let it define you. Like, don't stay there. You, you can't like we all been down. If you stay down, that's a choice. Going down happens. We all go down. We all going to take an L. If you stay down, you're just deciding to be a loser. And like that, that's unacceptable. So like yeah, you got to get going. I remember um, early on when we got first did uh, group workouts, actually, you know, it'd be like super early, like four in the morning, the tech strand would be like, hey, everybody up, everybody up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you know, sometimes everybody was like waiting, like is one person not going to come because then we can just reschedule it type thing, you know, mm-hmm. but then it like forced everybody to show up. So it's like 430 and everybody's up there like grinding and not lifting like regular weight, like heavy weight, mm-hmm. you know, just woken up. So I think that's really cool because that's kind of like a similar mindset, like amongst all of us. Yeah. Uh, we all seem to do better when we have like that tight group with like a similar mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you preach a lot about being so cognizant and aware of who you have around you in your circle. So I'm assuming you kind of feel similar to that. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, I think the thing that comes to mind, you know, when, when Reese was talking, Jay was talking, you were talking, we're like, we we're naturally programmed to have a default setting mm-hmm. and like, we, we have to like take a, a, a accounting of what is our default setting? Mm-hmm. Like when shit doesn't go right, what's our default setting? When something doesn't go our way, how do we typically act? 
How do we respond? What's our attitude? What's our action? And and I think that's in order in order to achieve big change, you have to reprogram sometimes. Like so, the way in which you know Reese is programming, you know his son uh, is he's programming his mind in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And just like you can you know you know reprogram your computer, you can reprogram you know all sorts of things you know technologically. We do that to upgrade. And so there are certain things in your life that you might have to reprogram the default settings in your own life in order for you to get out of the habit of being weak when that is an option for you. Like weakness is always going to be an option. Mm. Not doing something is always going to be an option. Um, but taking those options doesn't move you any closer. And so, you know, I think um, going back to, okay, well, what happens when maybe we have, you know, stumbled or we have tripped or we have fallen or we didn't wake up on time? Um, like Jay said, that doesn't define you, but how you respond when that happened will start to define you if you don't end up taking further action to say, okay, look, that happened, but that ain't going to happen again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to allow that to keep happening. And so, you know, I think one of the things that we can do is um, we can save ourselves from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the way that we do that is by surrounding ourselves with people mm -hmm. that, that we can say, yo, I'm getting up tomorrow at 2.45 in the morning. <sighs> and if that's the time <laughs> that I'm getting up, um, if I don't get up, um, I expect a phone call or a text message I'm sure. uh, from Reese that's going to say, get your ass up. Um, that's how I save myself from myself is by saying what I'm going to do and then having somebody that I know cares about me enough that's going to push me and pull me. And sometimes we need those people that aren't going to coddle us when things don't go our way. That are going to say, stop being a little bitch and get up, <laughs> get up. So something didn't go your way. Who cares? Get moving. And we need people to be tough on us because that's the only way that we develop strength. And so I think... It always goes back to the saying that I always say is like, you got to weaken the weakness. Your default setting might be weakness and you need to change that because the only way for you to get stronger is for you to weaken the weakness. Well, I'll tell you like this, even as he was talking, I don't know another way, like this platform, even, like, I'm gonna, like I got as much as I enjoy contributing, I enjoy being around this because you have to be around people who are in the business of like changing their fucking lives. Yep. Like, I think, like, if they say, what do you gravitate to, Maurice? Like, somebody has to be working on something that's calling them to be something different. Yeah. Like, I just can't be around people who just around, like, mundane, everyday, like, same no same. aspiration, same old shit, not chasing anything, not requiring you to be anything, not calling you to fight. That spirit just doesn't, I don't even want to be around. It's like a fucking loser spirit. And that may sound judgmental. I don't give a fuck because that's not what I want. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You have to, and oftentimes we, we mix these things, right? Person, people may attach business goals or material goals uh, as like targets for shit, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't mean that they're materialistic or that their life is centered around that. They're just doing things or trying to pursue shit to call for more out of them. Great point. You know where I'm coming from? Because yeah. I, I sent a text to Simon the other day, right? I said, it's something to be said around, um, I wish I had, well, I'm not going to pull my phone, but what I said was that there's something to be said around having the money to want to buy, or before, I, before I, I, like I would want money to buy something or a thing, mm -hmm. but then getting the money to buy that thing and not wanting that thing. Mm. You heard I'm coming from? Yeah. Knowing that you wanted could to push to a place that. of, I could get that now because I pushed myself by setting that target. You might even want it when you get there. No, but, but I'm speaking from experience. But then, but then I said, do you have to put an illusion in your head to motivate you? Mm. So the bigger thing I was saying to him was that like we had, we we put we, we bring illusions to ourselves mm -hmm. to improve ourselves. Yeah. Like the core of it, right? So like there's a couple of things that I, I can just go by right now. That I thought I wanted, but I'm like, I don't want that. And then I said, damn, but then I've put, after I've got to a space where I could buy something, my mind went to something else. And then I said, I don't really want the thing, 
but I need to make myself believe that I want this in order to keep on getting the most out of myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the shit like, it, but but then it, it like gets you into a deeper state. But like, damn, like, so what the fuck do you want? What you really want is to keep improving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you want to keep on putting targets out there that call for you to improve. Like Dan said it earlier. I don't know if it was this episode or last episode. Getting the path and getting the plan, like we can get there. It's really the hard work and the character that like kind of keeps you on the track. Yeah. Like the focus and who you are as an individual, and like how you define yourself is so. I'm defining myself by like, if I'm getting up at 245, motherfucker, I'm getting up at 245 because this is the reputation I want to have for myself. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't I don't know how I lost track right there, but like I, I did, I, I wanted to get that story just like bringing, bringing illusions in your mind that you believe in so much. Or even, even if you do get to that point of you do buy it, like whatever. But like, these are just things to drive behavior. They're just targets. I, I think the successful people just think differently. Like it's a, like it's a game, but it's not a game. It's a game, but it's not a game. Yes, one one thousand fucking percent is not a game. How how you how you think, right? It is gonna it's gonna determine like a lot. So like that's I mean it's a game, but it's not a game. You set your alarm, it's a game. But it's not a game. Yeah, but it, for like the viewers out there who aren't just naturally successful, I mean, kind of like what Jay spoke about in the last episode. What is going to get them there. They have like the goals. Yeah. You get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, if you want to wrap it's, it up, it's, just kind of. It's a gra- it's a gradual, it's, 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 con- it's compounding interest. So it's the same way, whether it works with investments, it's the same way that it works in life. It's, it's like, you know, compounding, you know, day after day after day, it's forcing yourself to do the hardship. If you can identify the things that you don't want to do and you force yourself to do those things, you get stronger. If you also look at it from the standpoint of like, I don't want to do those things. And then you don't do it, you get weaker. Mm. It's like it's one or the other. It's strength on one side, weakness on another. And you get to make that decision in the moment. It's like, am I gonna get stronger? Or am I gonna allow myself to get weaker and allow that to compound? So it's like, how do you get to that point? It's it's one decision at a time. It's not a decision, it's one decision again and again and again and again. And then as you make those decisions, you gradually become stronger. It's the same way you could gradually become weaker. But it's one decision at a time. That's I like it. the per- I like your personal. Uh, I, I, I'm big on metaphors. I love what you said about uh, like when our cell phone needs to be upgraded. Yeah, we don't hesitate. Right, we hit the software update and 100%. we plug it in every time because we don't want it to be running slow, bogged down with bugs and everything, viruses, all that stuff. But we don't do that with ourselves. Like we don't have a time to self evaluate and go, damn. I'm probably bugged down right now. I'm probably not operating uh, at my optimum capacity. I'm not achieving everything I could be doing. What do I need to do so that I can upgrade and I can get to the next level? I think I think all of this is is whether it be leadership, leading people, leading yourself. I think it all goes back to one word, and that's character. Yeah, that's who you are. Who you are is who you are. You know. So, Reese, anything that you want to? No, I don't know how much time we have. But I do. I do want to ask. I wanted to ask Jay to see if you can wrap it. You can answer it, wrap it up, however you want to do it. But as you said that, um, just as you would have indicators with your phone from. Uh, being slow and needing updates, mm-hmm. you can go ahead and go to the store and update your phone. Is there indicators in your life that you can point out to say, hey, I'm not operating at maximum capacity? And not just for people who are listening. Like, what, 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 what are some things? Question. I think, man, that's a deep question, actually, because everyone views themselves differently and everyone, uh, you, you know yourself, so you know when you're not doing mm-hmm. what you could be doing. Mm-hmm. But you, it's all behavior. It's all behavior related, I think. I. I think when you find yourself uh, checking out on yourself too often, you find yourself not committing to things, when you find yourself not showing up on time to things, when you find yourself just not, uh, man, I, I was, I was going to work out at five, uh, now it's six, now it's seven, uh, I'll do it tomorrow. When when you string a couple instances where that happens, you can recall, you're probably not operating at, at your optimal capacity. You're probably not doing everything you need to do. It might be time for some self-evaluation. It might be time to upgrade. It might be time to to start to recommit to yourself mm. and, and get going in the right direction again. Cause it, it can happen so fast and before you know it, you've looked up and a month's gone by and you and you haven't got anything done and you're floating. Mm-hmm. And you're like, damn it, I'm back floating again. And it's mm-hmm. how do I re-anchor myself? How do I recommit? And uh and that's something that I think it's important to have, like we talk about accountability people around you who care about you enough to to glance over at you and go, hey man, you know. What are you doing? We, we haven't seen you. You haven't checked in this week or you're not, you're not kind of on the path that you said you wanted to be on. I'm just letting you know. 
So uh, everyone's, these two clearly are self-starters, right? Like <laughs> they're probably not gonna need someone to, 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 to message them or something. Uh, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm like, I, I can't be a self-starter. And every now and again, I can float a little bit. And you know, he'll usually, hey, what do you got going on? What are you doing? And it, it snaps me out of it for a brief second. And it's like, all right, let's get back on track. We're all different, but I think knowing yourself, knowing what you need, uh, is half the battle of, of getting to where you're trying to go. That's it, man. Pay attention to how you think, pay attention to how you behave. I mean, because those things end up forming your life. Uh, your values, I think, are more character-based. Uh, so, of course, those are, your, those are your anchors. And so once you can identify, like, you know, what are your anchors? Those are, that's, that's how you then formulate your standards because your standards then are behavioral. Yeah. So, you know, look, if, if, if you want to increase your behavior, what you're doing is you're saying like, man, I'm going to increase my standards. I'm going to increase basically what I'm going to hold myself accountable to. And what ends up happening is that as you increase your behavior, as you, of course, increase your values and your standards, like life starts to change, man. Life Big starts to way better. So, uh, look, you know, you can't, you don't have to do it alone. I think that's like the biggest thing is like, you don't have to do it alone. You need people. So look, if you want to get to anywhere special in life, you need great people around you. So don't rely just on yourself, push yourself, but allow other people to fool you at times too. That's another episode of the Champ Program. We'll see you next time.